Robert, let me jump to you because Rosa just mentioned, um, you know, essentially minimum wage and 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 low income, and and you wrote this fascinating expose. It was so powerful. I really recommend that people look at it, uh, not just because it appeared in the Atlantic, because it's a powerful <laughs> expose <laughs> um, on essentially uh, on on what a trap essentially the minimum wage and low wage work that 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 so many women have. Can can you share with us your thoughts on? On, on the expense of being poor? Yeah, just one quick observation though, about <clears throat> uh, the marriage solution that Ari Fleischer yeah. proposed. Yeah. Low wages apply to men too, yeah. especially men of color, working class men, you know, no non con well, college educated men sometimes too. So when you say to a woman, you could get out of poverty just by getting married, no. my question is, how many men does she have to marry? <laughs> In order to get her out of the water. Because, you know, marrying a $10 an hour man gets you nowhere. Not going to get you anywhere. You would really need three or four, <laughs> which brings its own problems, uh, I'm sure. But anyway, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just so tired of, of that uh, explanation. Uh, if one, when you, once you're in a low wage job, um, what I found and what people tell me um, is you really don't have a lot of freedom anymore. You can't say, I think I'm going to quit uh, this job here in the big box store because it only pays $8 an hour and I'm going to look for something better or I think I have something better. You can't do that because you would lose about two weeks pay minimum in making the transition. Now that's two weeks pay you can't do without. So you get kind of stuck and you're very, very vulnerable in that situation. 